All right, hey, what is up? Welcome to the sound of Sergey, episode 11. I am your podcast host, Sergey Nikolaevich Ivanov. Welcome back. It is very good to be talking to you again. I'm very glad to be here. And may I just say and start out this podcast by saying that free TV is the best thing ever. When I say free TV, I don't mean like free cable. I mean, that is awesome. But my new favorite thing is get rid of the direct TV box. Listen, hear me out. Hear me out. This is going to sound weird, but like, listen, and it will make sense. Get rid of the direct TV box. Get rid of the Comcast, whatever you have. Get rid of that and get one of the, get one of the, um, the bunny ear type antennas and screw it into the TV where it goes in. And just get one of those things where it picks up only local channels. It'll give you like 10, 15 channels. Get yourself one of those. They're like 10 bucks at the gas station. They're extremely cheap. Gives you HD. I genuinely feel like I am more of a human being when I watch those. It gives me the feeling that I'm on the road. Like when I'd go on road trips, it gives me that feeling of checking in and watching the motel TV, which usually sucks. It's usually real bad. You basically just revert to diners, drive-ins, and dives because that's really all you're ever watching that show for is when you check in at like a Hampton Inn at 10 p.m. But let's say you do decide to go to your local uh, uh, gas station, your local quick stop. You get one of those bunny ear antenna TVs for like 10, 20 bucks. Very simple, very cheap. You go home, you walk through the door, you plug it into your TV, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to pull an all-nighter, whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do that requires pulling an all-nighter. You pull an all-nighter, and you drink your good old cup of joe. You do whatever you do to keep yourself awake. You um you drink your uh, kickstart. I had a friend once. He drank this. The I'll get back to what I was talking about a minute ago. I had a friend. His name was Lucas. He drank he drank six or seven kickstarts in one sitting within like a thirty minute period. It was at school. He drank so many kickstarts that he literally like could not move. He was unable to. He was basically paralyzed for a couple minutes. And they had to, like, take him to the ER once. This is a true story. First thing, energy drinks in general cannot be good for you. I mean, like, they're ba- they're pure carcinogen. It's like the same stuff that they put in, like, diet soda. You know, the ones with zero calories? There's no way you get a zero-calorie soda through a natural way. It just does not happen. Anyway, I'll go back to the story. Whatever you got to do. Like, I sometimes have to pull all-nighters to edit an episode of Sergey Speaks or to edit photos or to get a um, photo assignment done. So I'll have to stay up or sometimes I'll just stay up just for the heck of it. And so what I'll do is I have like a very small TV, like it's the size of a computer model, very small, plug in the antenna TV, set that up in my office. It is a blast. It is genuinely, that is what life is really all about is free TV. Like a couple weeks, like not a couple weeks ago, actually a couple days ago, I pulled an all-nighter because I had to edit Sergey Speaks, the one that I just uploaded about Ouija Shark that has like no views at all. I was really hoping that would get get me some views and likes, but you know, one week and it's given me about five views, so that brings a tear to my eye. Anyway, let me get back to the point. <clears throat> I was pulling an all-nighter. A couple weeks ago and I plugged in the antenna TV and this was about one in the morning and I started watching Family Guy on my 49 which is my 49 is the channel that plays like public domain TV shows and movies except at this point somehow they had decided to show Family Guy Listen, when I say they show public domain, it's not all public domain, but it's the it's the the quality level of public domain, that is for sure. 
and they were playing like 2002 Family Guy, which I don't know. It, Family Guy's not particularly a great show past, you know, a certain point. It's never really been the the epitome, as they say, of um, adult-oriented cartoon comedy. That clearly goes to South Park anyway. Family Guy's never really been the best, but just watch an episode of Family Guy from like 2001, 2002. It is, it is a, it's bad. It's such a bad show. Like you, you watch an episode of Family Guy from 2003. I watched this episode and was like, the whole premise was like, Joe enters a disabled running it was like a disabled triathlon and at the same time meg stewie and brian and chris they like find 26 dollars they're like whoa man it's 26 dollars who's gonna uh you know do anything with it and they're all like oh we're gonna keep it here and protect it but then they're like oh let's spend the money is it it's one of the dumbest shows i've ever seen like, one of the dumbest episodes I've ever seen. Like, Family Guy has some very, very good content on it, but that was not it. <laughs> Family Guy from, like, pre-2005, garbage. I'm just, shots fired. All right. I'm sure many people have wanted me to address the big news. And what is the big news? I'm sure y'all have heard. They made the announcement. That McCracken County High School, the school that pretty much everyone who listens to this podcast goes to. If you listen to this podcast, there is a 99.969% chance that you go to McCracken County High School. They announced that they might be opening schools again with some, and by some I mean like a lot, restrictions on what you can and can't do, where you can and can go, protocols you have to follow. Supposedly, and listen, I don't watch the news because, listen, I don't have time for that. I don't watch the news. This is just my mom told me this at the dinner table. She goes, all right, the plan is you go to school. and Also, it's like an hour earlier, which is not a fun thing. You go to school. And you will basically wear a mask the whole day. They're, they're like, oh, well, if you can socially distance, you won't have to. You have to wear a mask the whole day. You show up to school and you're basically in, the whole, in one classroom the whole day. They do a temperature check. It's basically how they used to have school in like 1812. Where it was one schoolhouse. Everyone's all there at once. But also, if you don't want to go... You can opt to take NTI, which is what basically they did for the last half of the semester, um, uh, my junior year, because I'm about to be a senior. Boy, I feel, I, that's not a comfortable feeling. It's like, I'm less than one year from now, I will be legally allowed to vote, which is not a good thing. <laughs> so that's basically what it is. Choir is basically canceled, which is... <clears throat> sort of a crummy thing because they followed suit with the band from what I understand I don't know maybe I'm misreading this but the band sort of canceled band for a crummy reason which is that at least from the way they said it in the in the Facebook post and the way I read it maybe this is just me but the way I read it was they basically said something like because it was like because the fact that we will not be able to go into competition for marching band, we're not going to have march, or we've decided to cancel marching band classes because of that. Which, again, maybe I'm reading this wrong, but like that sort of comes off to me as, oh, now that there's zero chance we're going to be able to win a big fat trophy. Why even bother? We're canceling it. Which, that's a real slimy thing. Like, that does not make me feel good about 
that whole situation. Again, this is probably just my reading of the situation. Probably doesn't, that probably is not what they meant by that. But obviously the choir followed suit, which sucks because I had three choir classes down. Which, by the way, I'm sure that it doesn't come across in my voice here, but yes, I did. I do uh, a lot of choir. I do a lot of singing stuff. I I've been in a, a musical or two in my day, uh, which never again. I mean, no, that is. I did one musical, and that is enough for me. I had two lines one two lines in a musical and that was enough for me to wear no thank you to any more musicals ever in my life first thing musicals are written in like alto clef and i am a bass too so that is not for me there was a time when i was in newsies the musical newsies at my high school where i sang tenor songs so often, I became a tenor one. I could sing tenor one with ease. Nowadays, I cannot sing at all. But I did do a musical or two in my day. Um, I've been in choir for like seven something years now. Like six, I think six or seven years. Uh, I took vocal studio classes. I learned IPA, which is just dumb. Which IPA is not something you want to learn. It's really stupid. I don't recommend taking it if you have the chance. Vocal studio, I learned a little bit in um, classical Italian. Um, I learned some of the classic uh, Italian songs. I am not going to sing them. Like a year ago, I used to be able to sing pretty well. Nowadays, my voice is just out the window. I no longer have a good singing voice. At all. You do not want to hear me sing. Ever. Anyway. Choir. Not going to happen. Now. The big debate. The big debate. Is. Will they make students wear masks in the school? The debate is that. you you There are two sides. One is. You can't make kids wear masks in the school. That's a violation of their constitutional right. The other argument is, yes, you can make students wear masks for the greater good, for the safety of the nation, and to slow the spread. Both have good arguments. Now, let me address the first one first. The argument that, no, you can't make students wear masks at school. That's a violation of their constitutional right. This is something I see a lot in political debates is people talk about civil liberties, but when they talk about civil liberties, they don't actually talk about things that matter. No one cares about the civil liberties that matter. No one cares about the free speech civil civil liberties. People talk about, oh, it's in my, like, the fact that I have to go through TSA is a violation of my civil liberties. And it's like, your, li your civil liberty to what? Keep your shoes on? No, you're preventing terrorists from blowing up the airplane. I think you can spare to wear your socks out in the open air for a couple seconds and walk through an x-ray machine. Listen, I am a film photographer. I will gladly spend the extra like 15 minutes. It adds 15 minutes because you can't x-ray the film. You can't take it through the x-ray also to get just destroyed and it will be a bad thing. You don't want to put your film through the x-ray. I will take the extra 10 to 15 minutes to have them hand check my film. And I don't mind that because that's not a violation of my civil liberties. That's a s slight inconvenience. May I remind you, I was born in a country called Russia, where the orphanages are socialized, which causes babies to be put, 10 babies to a crib. They're so poor, they only have girls' clothes because they are cheaper. I wear, I wore girls' clothing when I was in the orphanage, Dharma Bianca, 24, Ulyanovsk, Russia. The water was so bad, I got eye infections. My dad got eye infections. They didn't even have diapers. They had just cloth diapers. They wouldn't even wash it. 
It was filth. They had barely any food. They had to water down. It was like they used half of what the baby formula was. The You know, the baby formula that's just add water. They would add twice as much water to make it go longer. That's how poor it was. That's like, if you were in Russia, if you suggest that you don't like Putin, whoom, black van shows up, you are never seen again. Your body is found in a dumpster and your head washes up in some beach in Australia and all your family suddenly disappears and all of a sudden your neighbors gain $20 million dollars they're wearing fur coats because they snitched on you and gave you away to the government. That's what happens in Russia. And people in America act like, oh, I have to wear a piece of clo cloth over my face for five minutes when I go into the gas station. This is a violation of my civil liberties. No. No. That is the dumbest thing. That genuinely is stupid. So, anyone who says wearing a mask is a violation of their civil rights, you're wrong. Also, look at any country where it is not a democracy, it is not an open republic, it's not a democratic republic. Look at a socialist dictatorship, a communist dictatorship, or just a dictatorship in general. That, ladies and gentlemen, is violation of... That is a violation of civil liberties, and that phone call was a violation of my right, my civil liberty, to have an uninterrupted podcast. Anyway, I have a story to tell you. And, uh, it ends with police being involved, and a chick, like a 50-year-old chick, wanting to fight me. So that's just to set the scene. This actually happened yesterday. So... Two weeks from now, if you look on my YouTube channel, there's a video in the works of Snapshot, my photography series. Two weeks from now, the video is going to be, there's a cheap rundown. It's not abandoned. I mean, like, you can still check in. But it's a very cheap, very seedy, very shady motel in the Paducah area. It's called the Deluxe Inn. And I've been planning a photo shoot there for a while, like a couple weeks, actually, to the point where... I waited a whole month to order a specific film stock from China, Vision 3 250D, because I knew that that film stock would suit this location the best, because I love taking urban landscape photography. That's like one of my favorite things to do. So I show up at about 7.30 p.m., because the sun sets at about 8 p.m., and that's the specific light that I wanted for this photograph. So I drive up to the Deluxe Inn, so I have about 30 minutes before um, I actually need to get set up. And it's like a one block walk away. Fair enough. 7.30 rolls around. I'm there. I'm waiting. I'm across the street from the Deluxe Inn. And I know the compositions I'm going to take. I know the exposure settings, everything. I have everything set up. Everything is prepared very, very well. Everything going swimmingly. Now, about 8, 8.05 rolls around and the light is starting to get good. The light is starting to get to the point where I need to start setting up the camera, setting up the composition, all of that stuff. So, across from the Deluxe Inn, there's an old um train factory like they build trains actually um became good friends with the lady who's like actually a night uh, guard there not night guard but she's basically like making sure kids don't like break in or whatever she's like oh are you taking photos there i'm like yeah and she's like oh that's pretty cool she was very very nice she let me take photos there and she's like oh that's pretty cool so i am standing there and i have my camera set across the street in the parking lot of this train factory. I take a couple exposures, three or four, do different exposure settings, you know, ex overexpose, underexpose, do different apertures, things like that, all normal photography stuff. Then I'm like, all right, I wanna get a different angle. So I realize across the street, which is basically the sidewalk that is connecting to the Deluxe Inn, I'm like, all right, this is where I want to photograph. 
this or this is gonna be another interesting composition. I actually sort of make a parkour type jump off of like a ledge. It's like six feet up in the air. I jump down onto the sidewalk and then I walk across the street. And I am a good citizen, so I actually walked in the little white line. I didn't just run across the street. I walked across the white lines that you're supposed to. I was not jaywalking. So I take all my camera gear and I get set up in the sidewalk that is closest. Before I was in the sidewalk across from the deluxe inn, then I walk over to the sidewalk that connects to the deluxe inn. And at this point, I'm about, you know, 150, 200 feet away. And I've got a 28 mil lens, which is a wide angle, so it gets a lot of stuff in frame. And it's a big, long motel, so that's part of the composition because I want to do a sort of panoramic image of this motel. So I set up the tripod and everything, and I take a couple exposures from the sidewalk closest to the motel. Then everything's going well, and the people actually, like, I thought they were going to at least be like, hey, I don't want my picture taken. All right. And I would have been like, all right, fair enough. This is a CD motel. People who are staying here are probably like having affairs with their wives or husbands. People are probably doing drugs here. I understand why people would like, if I showed up with a camera to photograph, that it would make sense for them to, you know, all right, let's go back into my room and close the blinds. I did think that, I mean, like, I would be taking exposures. It's clear enough that, like, I'm not some, like, private, like, I'm not some stalking people. Because I've got, like, the big giant Pentax. It's clearly an old camera meant specifically for artistic purposes. And this is a very um, photogenic location. I've got the cable release. I look like an old photographer from, like, the 1910s that you see in the movies. So... I think it should be pretty clear that I'm photographing this place for artistic purposes. So I am, I take the exposure and then I'm like, all right, let's do one more from a lower angle and a bit closer up. So I move like 10 feet up and I advance to the next frame and I get the composition, set the focus and everything. And I take one frame and then what I hear and my eye is through the viewfinder right now, so I don't know where it's coming from, is I hear a lady go, hey! And I go, what? And I remove my eye from the viewfinder. And there's this lady. And not lady in the sense that she's like very elegant. It's like this lady. I mean this lady is in like she's a female, and that's about it. This chick, she looks about... 45 years old has frosted tips looks like a drug addict she is carrying a green like tumbler like a green yeti cup but she has it in such a way that like it looks like she's about to chuck it at me i'm like and so already i'm like whoa what is going on she like starts like speed walking like you know you do at the pool she's by the way she's wearing a wife beater jean shorts and like flip-flops she's like speed walking like you would at the pool got like a green tumbler at the ready looks like she's about to assault me and i go uh ma'am can i help you and she goes she says what she's about to say in this story and my heart skips a beat she goes you know i can have you arrested for that and i go oh my gosh i've we we found a karen here and I don't mean Karen in the sense that, like, because usually you think of a Karen and you think of, like, a middle-class white soccer mom. This was, like, a lot lizard type woman. She goes, you know, I can have you arrested for taking my picture. By the way, she goes, taking my picture. She's not concerned about, like, actual privacy of actual other people besides herself. She's just concerned that I took her picture. And I go, ma'am, 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 let's calm down. And I try my best to de-escalate the situation. I go, excuse me, what do you mean you can have me arrested? And she goes, I can call the cops on you right now for taking my picture and, say, and taking photos here at this motel that I'm at. Basically along those lines. And I go, actually, no, ma'am, you can't. And she just, like, she's like, what, what did you say to me? Like, she gives that look. 
And here is where I flex my news team knowledge. As many of y'all know, I did work in news for a brief time. And one of the first things we learned is photographic and videography rights. Rights that photographers and videographers have as so long as you stay within some parameters. And there is a law that protects photographers and videographers from any uh, legal punishment or legal um, issues. Basically, you cannot get in trouble if you film or photograph a person or location or whatever, so long as you and your camera are placed in a public area, including a sidewalk. A sidewalk is a public area. So immediately, I was like, okay, I'm about to flex this knowledge on her. I go, ma'am, actually, no, you're wrong. I'm protected under the law. I'm a photographer. I'm taking a photograph of this scene. Um, I'm protected under the law because so long as I stay on a public area, such as a sidewalk, I'm protected under the law and I cannot be punished. And if, and I tell her these exact words, which I kind of regret because I kind of sounded douchey. I go, I'm protected under law. And if you do call the cops on me, I doubt they'd help you very much. Which in hindsight, that was unnecessarily douchey of me. I, I should have been nicer about it. And she goes, you're telling me it's legal for you to photograph people without their consent. And so then I realized, all right, she's more concerned that she thinks I'm photographing specific people. And then I turn the tables on this lady and I go, ma'am, ma'am, come here. And she walks over to where I am and I go, look through the viewfinder. And she looks through the viewfinder, and as she puts her eye up to the viewfinder, she does it very tentatively, and as she puts it up, I go, this is a Pentax K1000 with a 28 millimeter wide angle lens. And I put my hand in front of the lens, and I go, you'd have to be about three feet away to even discern if someone is a man or a woman if they're standing in front of this camera. From where you were standing, I doubt you can even tell who you are. And the minute I say that, and the minute she looks through the viewfinder, I can see her visibly relax. Like she had her green tumbler like in her hand ready to smack me in the head with it. And she put, she lowers that, she visibly relaxes, she immediately drops all tension. She go, she removes her eye from the viewfinder and she goes, I am so sorry. I am, I, uh, I'm so sorry for making a big deal out of this. And that was when I was like, boom, Sergey just did a 180 on this chick right here. Uh, and, sh and then she says something that kind of makes me feel bad. And she just goes, I'm sorry. I just didn't want to be seen here. That was on me. Please, if you forgive me, if you'll forgive me that, that um, please try to forget about what I just said. That was my fault. And I go, oh, and I'm very understanding. I go, Yes, that's all right. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're, you're good. Don't worry. Now, she walks away, but I see in the corner of my eye, as she's walking away, I, I, I continue to take photos. You'd think that most people would like be like, all right, that's enough photos for one day, and they'd walk away. I keep taking photos after that. And then in my viewfinder, I see... A police car driving towards my way and I think because the police station is like a block away from where I am so oh they're probably just you know nightly patrol of the area but also in the back of my mind I was like he's probably here for me he's probably here for me the car is driving in my direction and I'm like please don't stop for me please don't stop for me I, and I'm just taking photos minding, minding my own business and I'm like please don't stop for me please don't stop for me and I'm like, oh, crap, because the car starts to slow down once it gets to my area. I'm like, oh, crap, to the point where the car is literally in my frame. This police officer's car is, like, in the middle of my composition. The police officer doesn't get out. He sort of says to me through the window, I stand up because I'm like, I don't, I don't want to, like, make any sort of trouble here. Because I almost just got assaulted just now for this very same reason. And this is what he's probably here for. And he goes, hey, what are you doing over there? And I go, oh, I, I'm just a photographer. And he goes, oh, you are? 
And I go, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a photographer. I'm setting up this composition here. And he goes, are you from the local area? And at first, I'm like, well, what, what does he mean? And I thought that this was, suppo- this was about to get, like, I was about to get arrested. Like, I was, I was very scared at this point. And at first, I don't understand what he means by, are you from the local area? And I go, yeah, I'm from the local area. I live in this town. And he goes, oh, okay. And I still don't understand what he means. But then he continues and he says, I just wanted to make sure that you knew where you were because I saw you taking photos out here, which is fine, but this is a seedy area of town. I just wanted to make sure that you weren't lost, that you weren't going to get hurt. So this guy was on my side. And then I go, no, it's okay. I I live in the area. I've been here before. And he goes, okay, that's all right. And then he points out his window to the lady that was just talking to me. And he goes, was she giving you trouble? And I go, uh, don't worry about it. She, she talked to me a while back, but it's all right. We, we've settled things out. And he goes, oh, okay. I, I just didn't know if she was giving you too much trouble. Because if she was, I would have talked to her. And, and basically, he sides with me. And that is as much flack as police officers get these days in the current political climate. As much as people like, oh, screw police officers. As much as people say that, I have nothing but good things to say about my interaction with that police officer. He was nice. He was looking out for a, for a citizen safety. And after that, he goes, okay, well, will you stay safe? Have a good night. And he drives away and I go, you too. And basically, I avoided getting stabbed and I avoided getting arrested. So that is why your boy is still here. Now, that being said, I think it is going to be a very long time before I go and photograph those CD areas of downtown Paducah ever again. That is, if there's anything that will put you off of doing, you know, urban landscape photography, that is it. That is not a location that I'm going to be visiting in the near future. Anyway, thank you so, 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 so. So much for listening to the Sound of Sergey podcast episode 11. Thank you for supporting this. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to tune in next week for more Sound of Sergey 10 a.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify for free. If you have zero dollars, you can still listen to the Sound of Sergey podcast every Friday, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Sergey underscore speaks and at Servanov underscore. Make sure also to subscribe to me on YouTube, Servanov, S-E-R-V-A-N-O-V. Every Friday at noon, Central Standard Time, 12 p.m., I will be releasing a video. Every other week, it will be Sergey Speaks the Funny Videos. And every other week in between that will be my new photography series, Snapshot, which, by the way, the story I just told about taking those photos there, that will be included on an upcoming episode of Snapshot. So make sure to tune in to that on YouTube. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being such an awesome audience. And I will see you next week.